Hi everyone, today I'm going to be colouring this absolutely cute little wigwam picture. This is from um, Worlds of Wonder by Johanna Basford and I'm going to be using my Castle Art set. I have the Botanical set but um, these colours will all be in the 150 set if you've got that one um, and we're just going to crack on and have a little go. So there's plenty of greens in this set so I thought I would do each tree a different colour. I realised they're all supposed to be pine trees but I thought we'd just have a play around with some different colours from the set and uh, I'm going to start with this um, upside down um, <laughs> sap green colour and I'm going to use it for this tree here. Now I'm thinking um, I'm going to do it so that the trees are darker at the bottom and lighter at the top which is I know it's night time but there's moonlight there so I think that might would potentially be shining on the top of the tree so I'm going to put quite a lot of layers of the green down here at the bottom of the tree and then lighten it as we go up by adding less layers and the art of doing this so that you get an even transition between light and dark is to just go over it quickly like that and then have a look and think right that bit looks like it needs a bit more that bit and that sort of thing and just then sort of fill in where you think there are little gaps and you can keep fiddling with it don't think don't look at it and think oh that didn't work and then leave it have a fiddle around with it until it uh, until it looks like how you wish so I've got to keep my hand on the page all the time because the paper has is curling up now the top of the tree I want to look lighter so I'm going to grab there's a light green here the um, leaf green light and I'm going to do start at the top and then work down with this lighter colour and sort of blend both the colours together with this one I'm not going to go all the way down to the bottom there's that tree okay just popping those back in the tin but leaving them out a little bit so I remember um, which ones I used because I need to write them down for you just in case you want to go now the next tree I'm going to do this one and I'm going to use the fallow green light so this is quite a bluey green but I rather like it I don't know if it's going to quite work for this tree but we're going to give it a go anyway I might go over it in another colour after because we're going to do the same as we did with the other tree so if I go over it with a more yellowy colour, it will uh, make it look more greeny, I think. But I'm just going to get this transition right first. You can see it's very dark here. There's a weird line there and it's light there. So I'm just going to go over it and sort of smooth it out, really. And as I say, just keep playing with it. Add light layers a bit at a time until you get the look that you want and I'm happy with that. And now I'm going to pick a slightly lighter colour to go over it. I'm actually going to use a brown-ish. It's not actually a brown. This is the um, terracotta light. So it's a sort of yellowy browny colour and I'm going to go over it with this and I think it will change the colour for us. Oh, it's making it look quite brown. I was expecting it to make it look a bit greener. It doesn't seem it just seems to be sitting on top. Oh well, we'll keep going and we'll see what happens. It is a little bit more brown than I had thought it would be. This is the thing with using new pencils. You're not quite sure what to expect. What I'm going to do is take that the um, that light green, leaf green light, sorry, that we used for the other one. I'm going to go over it with that. And I think that will bring it up to a green colour. And uh, make it look a bit more like how I imagined. I'm pressing quite hard here because I want quite a lot of this to go down to sort of blend it all up together. There. 
It doesn't look that dissimilar to this one now, but it's okay. It's, it's different enough, I think. Now, my last choice is the permanent green. And now with this tree, I'm just going to sharpen the green. Um, see how the page moves, I'm sorry. Um, because it's got these layers, then we need to take notice of those layers when we're colouring it. So I'm going to do a dark colour here and lighten it down towards the bottom. And the same here, so more layers up here and then less as we go down. It's not massively obvious yet, but we'll build it up a little bit. I find the best thing is to just do it in little stages and it's easier to keep the transition of light to dark then or else you can end up with a stripe like that and then light like that and it doesn't look how I want it to look so I find it easier to just gently build it up I thought this was a little bit darker than it is so rather than I thought I was going to add a lighter colour to this I think I'm going to add a darker colour maybe but I'm just going to go back over each one just tidy them up darken it where I think it should be even out the tone a little bit uh, you know the transition and just improve the whole look a little bit then I will grab my darker one which one should I use Hmm, that one, no, this one, the, um, this is the sap green, I think it might work. I think it's adding some shadow under those sort of overlapping parts. And we just need to blend it down so we don't have a line. There. That's that's that. I'm gonna leave that there. Now the trunks of the tree. Actually we've got the grass. I'm I'm in danger of forgetting the grass. I'm gonna use these um leaf green light and just do just do a little bit. I'm really just scumbling a bit of green down here. I'm not going to do much. It's quite pale. And I think in this moonlight it might be a bit darker than that, but it's okay. I don't want it to take from the, uh, the, the sort of main part of the picture. Now the tree trunks. I am going to want, I want quite a dark brown. And so my dark brown is a burnt umber. But I'm not going to press hard at first. I'm going to do a light layer, yeah? And then I'm going to apply it in a heavier, darker amount on the edge of each tree trunk, leaving a slightly lighter bit in the middle so that it looks makes it look a little bit more rounded. So I'll show you again. A light, then dark on each edge, and then just take it towards the middle. It's quite tricky with one this small, but these pencils keep their point well, so they're easy and they're quite narrow as well, which is nice. Now we've got the wood on the teepee. I'm not going to do it the same colour as the um, as the trunks of the tree, so I'm gonna. I've grabbed this raw umber. Sorry, I'm getting all blurred. And I think it looks more like cut wood rather than the sort of tree trunk bark which would be darker there we go now i haven't actually shaded this at all i've done a flat color so i'm going to go back over in areas i think might be a little bit darker such as in this bit here where it all crosses over and as it comes up from the ground and from behind the tree there there we go now that little bit of ropey bit, actually I might do it in the same colour 
of course we're going to end up using every colour in the box although maybe that's okay I don't know now the actual um, curtains inside of the tent I want to look really pretty so I'm going to grab some of my purples these purples in the set are lush really lovely vibrant so this is the purple and I'm going to use this for the curtains I guess they aren't curtains are they? They're the actual tent material which means that the back would be the same because it's the sort of inside and maybe the, even the base but I suppose I don't have to do them the same I think I'm not going to you know, if you see what I'm doing I'm doing a light layer of the purple and then doing more doing it darker here by where it's tied back because it would be gathered and so it would be shadowy and there where it's crossing over also would be a bit darker now I think I'm going to do the inside of the tent in the in the heather purple colour it's a really pretty colour as well I think these two colours, I don't know, the pink reminds me of water lilies, this reminds me of lavender. Now I'm going to take it darker around the edge, make it a little lighter towards the middle because the opening is more towards the middle so it would naturally be a bit lighter there. And I'm going to do the base of the tent in the same colour. Uh, I shouldn't, I sh it would be darker at the back than the front because there's less light inside the back of the tent. Now it looks like a slightly different colour even though it is the same one because I've pressed a lot harder. I think that's good. I like that. Now we've got the sky, oh we've got the little ties on the tent. Um, I'm going to do those. I think I'm going to do those in the same purple. I haven't got a big range of colours and I thought about doing the neon pink but I think it, the pink, the rose pink it's called, but it's very neon -y. I thought it might just not quite look right. So I'll do that. Now the sky. Um, we've got We've got several shades of blue. We've got, I think I'm going to use the ultramarine. I'm going to do it quite faintly though, I don't want a thick heavy sky, I just want a light, so I don't mind there being white paper showing through. I'm trying to use the circular movement where I can, so that I get a more even coverage. My pencil's on its side, so it gives quite a light pressure, so we don't have masses of colour, it doesn't push it down into the paper too much. So just trying to go around the trees quite delicately so we get enough blue without it being too much. It doesn't need to be exactly precisely even but you don't really want it big streaks in some areas where it's really dark. Now getting an even edge around this picture in the background is not something I'm going to achieve by any stretch of the imagination. You could draw a square around it before you start and just colour up to the square. I was tempted actually on this page, I have to admit, to draw a grid through the page and then do a background for each item, but uh, I haven't. Um, I've done a few of them now, um, some of them for tutorials on my website and some of them for one of them for YouTube so uh, it's a bit late now and what, one of them's got a background the other two haven't so never mind it's just going to be a mix I don't mind I sort of treating each one of these pictures as a separate entity rather than as a page of pictures
Right, I'm getting there. There's our sky. I'm quite happy with how that is. She says going back and fiddling a bit more. Now, the moon has stayed white. I've managed to not colour over it, which is pretty amazing. So I'm going to leave that white. Um, but the stars, um, I'm thinking I might do them yellow with my yellow Posca. So, just shaking it up. I think it would just look different to the white moon. So here's the Posca and it's my PC1MR. So I'll show you the, um, it's the fine tip. It's very splodgy on the end. And I'm just going to go over these star shapes. I'm not sure how well it's going to show up because I've not tried this on top of this colour before. I sometimes find this nibs are even a bit too thick and it's the smallest one. But these are mini pictures after all. There we go. Let me hold the page down so you can see it. There. I'm happy with that one so I'm going to leave it there. Um, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and happy colouring.